Okay, well happy Saturday afternoon to you all. It's uh, May 8th and uh, I haven't had the little uh, CT125 out in a couple of months uh, since my trip to the Cotton Bowl Speedway with the boys. Uh, this has been about six or eight weeks ago. I can't keep track. Uh, when I got back, uh, I tore this thing apart to start putting on the accessories and then just got busy with work and what stopped me was I have uh, another moto skill uh, this is moto skill this is moto skill that is not uh, but i have another moto skill uh, bracket up here that's kind of a, a shelf holder and a, a headlight guard and all that the bolts that they sent were too short uh, to make it all the way through here uh, without stripping out my uh, bosses on the uh, fork legs there so anyway i uh, had to order some longer 55 millimeter uh, bolts i just couldn't find any here locally uh, so anyway i put it back together last night and today went through it did the maintenance uh and i'm at 500 and something miles now as you'll notice on my fancy new op mid gauge uh, i put this in a few weeks ago and uh, tested it and it was giving me fits i couldn't figure out why i fi figured it out yesterday uh but i got 554 miles on it right now and you notice my temperature gauge is working now so is my tack i did a short video trying to it, figure out why it wasn't working uh, the coil wire I had it on the wrong side you got to put it on the pink side not the black side uh, the other side is ground so it wasn't getting a signal it was uh, it needs to be on the interrupt side uh, you know the feed side for the coil to pick up rpm anyway uh, we do not have a gear position indicator that I could find yeah, maybe we do hey it's doing it based on speed I guess uh, I don't think it actually checks the transmission no, it's doing it based on speed, because I just changed up to second. So it's nice that uh, we get something, and as soon as you go to neutral, it knows that. But anyway, I'll get into all that later. Uh, this is my uh, Zeta windscreen. Uh, I wanted to use some rocks bar risers on this, but I didn't think it through uh, before I started that route and ended up wasting a bunch of time. Uh, the Zeta brackets are made to tie directly into this width and this uh, spacing. Rock's bar risers are a little wider and uh, more open uh, so it wouldn't work uh, so I had to pull those out uh, but I did get to use this uh, Kitako universal uh, brace here so I can hook up a roll chart or whatever on there if I so choose. I don't know that I'm going to need to go that far. Uh, but I've got the Motoskill center rack, Motoskill uh, engine guard. I have a couple of little flip down uh, foot pegs that are going to go on here. They're supposed to show up today or tomorrow. Uh, probably going to put them right about there so I can just stretch my legs out a little bit when I'm riding longer distances. Uh, I have some driving lights that I'm going to put on here. Haven't done it yet. Um, I need something else. I, I need another relay. Uh, the relay that I had, the wiring harness wasn't going to work out quite right. Uh, and I need some longer stainless steel bolts here that I just have to pick up from the hardware store. So I'm going to have to pull this part of it uh, open again, take this off, this off, this off to do the wiring for that. But it won't be that bad. Uh, and then I'm going to put my uh, enable disable switch here. Uh, my main issue is I've got to figure out how to tie it into the uh, headlight low high for trigger on that. Uh, because this LED light has got like, I don't know what it is, eight or 12 lines in that little plug. <laughs> I'm like, holy crap, how many do you need? So anyway, I gotta figure out which one of those is low and high. Uh, what else? That's pretty much it. Uh, put my uh, double take mirrors on there before my trip to uh, Cotton Bowl. And then of course, uh, uh, the Garmin mount I've got on here. And I don't know if we can see the, uh, see the logo. Moto pumps. I don't know if you guys can see that. Anyway, uh, very neat little uh, clamp that they've made here out of uh, Delrin or something. It's real tough. And then it's got a, a aluminum plate. It allows you to mount your uh, GPSs onto uh, tubes, you know, windshield tubes or crash bars or whatever you want. Uh, so I didn't have to have some big funky uh, Garmin ball up there which uh, would intrude and use too much space. So anyway, it's all wired up. Got my uh, last piece is the uh, quad lock. Uh, inductive charging head here motorcycle waterproof all that so i don't have to plug into the bottom of the phone just uh charges that way so anywho i gotta get on the road here it's a work day for me okay so on the road i go Ugh. get this thing down off here this gauge is uh, much more legible much, much more legible than the uh, factory gauge. You had to really be at the right angle on the factory gauge. Of course, my GPS is kind of getting in the 
the way if I sit too far forward, but my normal sitting position, I'm looking straight in at that gauge, it's good. Uh, yeah, so anyway, off we go. Let's see, neutral first. Now I have to go all the way over to Micro Center, which is uh, 16 or 18 miles from here. And pick up some equipment for a customer that lives all the way up in spring. So this is going to be quite the trek for me today on this little cub. It's neat that it's detecting the gear based on speed and engine RPM. It's kind of nice. I think all of that is tunable. Uh, there are a whole bunch of menus in this uh, gauge. You can set different thresholds, uh, tack range, redline uh, warning, shift warnings, all kinds of stuff. I think you can even set temperature alerts. and It's got all kinds of neat stuff in it. It was like 225, 229, somewhere in that range. So it wasn't terribly cheap, but not horribly expensive either. So I don't know. I think it's worth it. The fact that I can read it makes it worth it. <laughs> the factory gauge is really bad on this bike. At night, it's not so bad, I'll say that. The factory gauge at night isn't so bad. GPS is telling me to go one way, I don't want to go that way. Yep, it knows about fourth gear. And I didn't uh, put my cruise control back on here, I stole it for my other bike. Make a U-turn. Should I listen to it? Let's listen to it today. Let's see what it says. Let's see what it's telling me to do. I don't know. I was going to go the I-10 route, but then that means i got to go all the way down through town on 610, and I'd really rather not do that. This is not a good highway bike. Uh, I haven't done my full review, complaint, whatever you want to call it with this, but uh, I'll tell you, it, uh, it doesn't like going over 50 miles an hour or maintaining over 50. So that's a problem. Oh, that gauge is so much better. I don't know what the flashing is, that's not good. What's the flashing red? I'll have to look that up later. Not sure what flashing red means. RPM's okay. Oh, maybe it's like a shift thing that I need to turn off because when I dropped the RPM under 5,000, it went away. Let's see if I can adjust this mirror now real quick. Ugh. I need to get these things set again because I bumped them all out of whack. While I was working on it. And I can't take my hand off of there while I'm riding because I took my cruise control off. <laughs> so we might get rained on today. There's uh, like a 30% chance of a thunderstorm around uh, one o'clock. So about an hour and a half from now. I don't know if I'm gonna be in the path of it or not, but we'll see. Yeah, there I am, looking for fifth gear. This thing is so short geared. I may just go ahead and put a uh, 14 or 15 tooth front sprocket on it for tootling around town. Uh, when I need to do off-road, it's gonna need a little more ump for off-road uh, than what it has right now. So that either means gearing it down or a big bore kit uh, because up real steep hills and uh, you know sandy ruts and stuff like that, even in first gear, it uh, it kind of bogs a bit. It's hard to get it running. It's hard to get it moving. You gotta paddle it with your feet, get off of it, whatever. Uh, has a little hard time getting up some steep, steep hills from a stop, or you know, if you get bogged in. So, uh, shorter gearing will help that, obviously. Uh, more power will obviously help. A big bore kit it would do wonders. So I'm probably going to do the uh, 143cc uh, Yumanashi kit because it doesn't require a lot of extraneous support parts. 
Uh, it uses the factory head. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. You need a fuel controller, obviously, or just uh, upgrade to the PCX150 injector, I think is what people have been doing, and you're golden. No other changes, no throttle body changes, nothing. Just a slightly bigger injector, and the factory ECU can run it. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea for intake and exhaust at that stage, you know, obviously, just let it breathe a little better. So, probably try to tune it with uh, injector size instead of uh, doing a piggyback ECU. Actually, the PowerVision 3 probably has uh, the ability to program this because they can do it for the Cub, the Super Cub. So, uh, I'm betting the. Uh, DynaVision will have a uh, map for it soon, if not uh, already. I haven't checked. I already have that controller. I just need to get the extra license and the programming cable. So this is the first time I've ridden it with the uh, little windscreen on it. It helps with the chest pressure. It doesn't do anything at all for uh, uh, upper body, obviously it's too short. But with this uh, brace and this mount up here, I might be able to just get another piece of uh, Lexan or plexiglass and cut it to fit uh, and figure out a way to, you know, drill it and support it in that center section where it screws in with the four screws on the front. Yeah, it helps with the chest pressure. Uh, so my green lights and the red light there are shift warnings. So I'm going to have to turn those off because, you know, normal cruising speed here at 50 is just lit solid saying, hey! <laughs> this gauge apparently works with the Monkey uh, and the CT125. I'm not sure if it works with other bikes, uh, but the instructions that came with it are for Monkey and CT125. They give you a, a different setup instructions for the CT. you got to go in and change values in the, the gauge settings. And then that uh, 550 to 553 miles, whatever it was when I started, uh, you set your initial mileage to correspond to what the original gauge was when you took it off. And that's supposed to be a one-time set. I don't know if you can go backwards with it. You might be able to go forwards, but I don't think you can go backwards. That would kind of cheat, wouldn't it? So uh, it looks like I need to do some adjustment on the speed because GPS says I'm going 50 and Speedo says I'm going 53. So I use their values that they said to plug in, uh, but I'm going to go into the go into the gauge and uh, change the rear tire diameter uh, option and just uh, increase the diameter a little bit. And uh, our, yeah, increase the diameter, I guess. So that'll alter the Speedo because right now it's getting it off of the uh, counter shaft output. But that's funny because that setting right there, the deviance or deviation is the same as what it was uh, with the factory gauge. It was about two to three miles per hour high at 50. So they're just trying to match up with what the factory says. So I'm going to try to uh, edit a bunch of videos. I haven't had a chance to do any video cutting, editing, posting, any of that uh, in a while, probably three weeks. So I'm going to try to get some videos out. I've got a bunch uh, waiting on the Rebel, uh, my exhaust swap comparison with the uh, Kaufman Shorty. That thing sounds really good. Uh, and then on this one, I've got that uh, whole... Uh, cotton bowl trip with the boys up to uh, the, what was it, uh, past Brenham. Uh, you know, losing my mind here, I can't think. Anyway, Cotton Bowl Speedway. Page, Texas, that's it. So, uh, got that whole uh, adventure, plus the track time up there. And uh, a little teaser, uh, I took this thing out on the track, uh, out on the circle track the day before we left, or the day we left actually, it was the day after the races, 
took it out there and ran it around the track. <laughs> that was fun. They let us. They didn't mind at all. So we took the two Cubs, the Zuma 125 and the CT 125 out there the, uh, on the dirt. Anyway, this is going to be slow and boring, uh, getting all the way into the middle of town, so I'll shut this down and save the battery. I'll catch up with y'all in a little bit. Okay, so I'm here at Micro Center, picked up what I need, and uh, the box is a little bigger than I had anticipated. <laughs> Good thing I brought the net. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I thought maybe it would go in there sideways or whatever, but no, that's a, it's a big stick. So, hey, thank you. And uh, they didn't have any big bags in there. Luckily, I usually carry a trash bag uh, in my laptop bag to keep it from getting wet. So it's going to keep the product dry in case I get rained on. What am I going to do about my laptop? We'll figure it out. So anyway, I'm going to head uh, north up to Spring, uh, all the way up in Champions Forest, actually. So it's going to be a drive. Where am I going? Left? Yeah. Okay, well, welcome back to my uh, Saturday afternoon in progress, or Saturday evening now. It's like 6.40 or 5.15, I guess, 5.30 now, something like that. My arrival time at home is 6.45. Finished up with my house call. Uh, this is a, a long-term customer slash friend of mine. Uh, I've been doing work for this guy for, oh, God, a long, long, long time. Uh, a, over a decade. Uh super successful guy really really nice guy he's a ex airline pilot just retired uh like a year ago from southwest airlines uh ex uh air force f-16 pilot before that super super successful guy uh just really neat to know him uh set up his network in his house and video security and all that and, uh, Ubiquity decided to kill off one of their uh, products, the old uh, NVR line, and uh, he wasn't able to see his uh, video security stuff remotely, so we had to upgrade the whole thing. Uh, put in one of the uh, Dream Machine Pros there and reconfigured his Unify network and all the uh, video security and all that, and uh, got him upgraded, so it was only about a two and a half year old system but he got it right before they discontinued or you know mothballed it and it went dead at the beginning of this year so he's been waiting a few months for me to get out there and sort this out okay so back in my neighborhood back in Katy and uh, just about home uh, meet up with the family and have some dinner. I'm hungry. I don't know what we're doing tonight. Japanese, Chinese, we're not sure. It's going to be takeout or uh, sit down and eat of some flavor. Not at home. Wife doesn't feel like cooking, so hey, that's fine with me. We'll just go out. Uh, yeah, so anyway, full day of riding the uh, little CT125. Opinions haven't changed. Great little bike, but seriously underpowered. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even for my normal commutes, you know, where everybody's moving 55, 65, this thing, it's just, uh, it's struggling to keep up at 45 to 50 most of the time. Uh, the Cub, conversely, does not have that same problem. The Cub can do 55, 60 pretty comfortably. This one just can't reach it. Uh, so it's just different in the tuning of the motor and... Uh, aerodynamics of the bike whatever it just uh, it has a real problem getting over 45 miles an hour but you know i'll do the uh, mild big bore kit on it and uh that should wake up this motor quite a bit i would think and uh everything else as far as the mods i put on it seemed to work well i'm gonna get a little uh, tank bag or something to fit right here my little foot pegs to hang my feet right here it'll be good and uh, the OpMid uh, gauge works really well. I can see that thing, it's fantastic. I need to do the little tuning on it uh, to get it true to GPS because it's reading a little high right now. Same as the factory Speedo did. Um, that flashing red light, the only thing I can gather is it is a temperature sensor. You can see my temperature there running at 137 Celsius which is kind of a normal temp, I think, for this. It's where it's been hovering most of the day, give or take about five degrees. 
uh, sitting still now you can see it climbing quite a bit uh, but I've never seen it over like 143 so uh, I'll move that uh, temperature warning out of the way and I'm also going to turn off the shift notification because it looks like turn signals to me and I don't like it don't like it at all so I'm going to turn that off and uh, other than that the gauge is just great works a treat hey hey girls Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Oh, you give me a hug. Grace is going to give me a hug. Everybody's going to give me a hug. Okay. I'll catch you all later.